Hey everyone, in this video we're going to create knowledge graphs from text or PDFs. It's going to be a streamlit app and it's also going to provide a summary and also JSON based entity extraction. You can download the knowledge graph, the JSON, and also the summary separately. As you can see, the knowledge graph downloads as an HTML. You can choose from Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, GPT 4.0, Gemini 1.5 Pro from Open Router. You can paste your content here or switch to an upload file, which will allow you to upload text or PDF. You can paste in any text you like. I was searching for some auto battler games. Let's just copy the answer perplexity gave me, and we can simply just paste it here and click on generate knowledge graph. And it will begin by extracting entities and relations. Well, this is ongoing. You can actually view the output from your terminal if you if you saw. It will display the extracted entities. You can copy them from here. And it will also display the extracted relationships. And then it will display them here by their relationships. It will also give you a summary and the entity extraction within JSON as well. Like I said, you can paste anything here, but we can also upload files. Let's switch to that mode. We can actually upload the transcript of one of my YouTube videos, for example, fine tuning GPT mini. That was an interesting one. You can actually watch that from my website, acquire.live. This one right here. Let's see what it comes up with. Let's create the knowledge graph for it. And then after that, we'll try a PDF or NVIDIA 10Q report. Code files for this will be available at my Patreon. Link is in the description. If you become a patron, you will also have access to 250 other project files like this. Here, here are the extracted entities, relationships, and the knowledge graph. Uh, let's zoom in. Okay, fine tuning is, yeah, we were also generating synthetic data set automatically, and we were creating a sarcastic model. So here are the entities. Created. Here is a summary of the video based on the transcription and the entities. Let's now try with a really large file, which is the NVIDIA's 10Q report. Now, the tokens are going to get expensive, obviously, with large files, and also the entity extraction quality entirely depends on the model and also the system message, which, which we'll talk about later. I have instructed, I was failing, if it, if it tries to uh, create a full knowledge graph from a really long text, then uh, the parsing of the knowledge graph actually fails. So I instructed it to extract at least the essential information. Uh, we'll talk about all of that. And I felt like Cloud 3.5 Sonnet can have a tendency to get a little bit lazy. You can try GPT-4.0, which doesn't, which has a lesser tendency. And Gemini 1.5 Pro, it's just not the best, but it may be better for certain type of documents. Here is the entity extraction. Usually it is more complex than that. Here is a summary in bullet points. Revenue was up $26 billion, and now we are receiving the uh, entities in JSON format. And this extracted relationships is uh, interesting. See, it says J Jensen Huang certified quarterly reports from Thank You, for example. Yeah. Entity JSON extraction also sometimes fails for really large documents. So this is something to keep in mind. I believe you can fix this with by using, if you were to use GPT-4.0, let's try this again. It's going to load the PDF again, just to see. But this can also be fixed with the system message. I tried a few times, but maybe you'll have a better go at it than I, am. I did. Okay, let's generate the graph using GPT-4.0. So this automatically detects the API keys for Entropic, OpenAI, and OpenRouter from your system variables. If it doesn't, then an, an API box will pop up here. Then you can enter your API keys in there as well. Like I said, the code files for this will be available at my Patreon. Link will be in the description and also in the pinned comment. As you can see, this has taken much longer. The GPT-4 tries to extract more entities. Let's see if we'll be able to parse the entities it generates. Okay, actually it was able to, and here are the entities, as you can see, much more complex. So GPT-4.0 has a lesser tendency to get lazy. That's something important to note. Here is the summary, much more detailed, and we are now on to the JSON. Here it is again, uh, much more detailed, it seems, from the previous one. So now let's take a look at the code, but before we continue, 
If you are enjoying my projects, I like to mention my website, ecolive.live, in which you can find all my videos, uh, actually currently over 350. You can actually search for things you're looking for as well. And when you become a patron, you can actually download the code files for each one by just clicking on the code download link. You can find the code download links under each video as well. I also have 1000x masterclass in which I actually share 13 projects which I've coded from scratch which we did with videos of live coding me and also their project files. Take a look at this as well. My patrons really download the videos and the project files directly from this post. So thank you. And now let's dive into the code. So this is a single file app consisting of knowledge graph underscore st. Uh, but I've created a readme for it. You can read how it works through this when you download the code. We are using Network X to create, uh, to manipulate the graph structure and PyVis to generate interactive graph, PyPDF for reading the files. And we are using unified APIs, which I've created. We'll quickly overview this. This is a class I've created to interact with OpenAI, Anthropic, and Open Router APIs in a convenient manner. The default models are GPT-40, 3.5 Sonnet, and Gemini Pro 1.5, again from Open Router. If you wanted a more detailed look, watch this video, Unified APIs video, in which I do a detailed code review. But essentially, this has all the necessary uh, methods to actually manage the message history, trim it based on how many words you would like in there and get a resp get responses from all models whether you want to have streaming responses or not it also has the async version of all the functions so you can actually call them in parallel but the main uh, file is this one knowledge graph st we are uh, having all of our imports which are listed uh, in the requirements.txt and we print uh, information that's saying initializing knowledge graph. This will be printed in the terminal. Then we define, uh, let me zoom in a little bit, for our first function, which is get entities and relations, which is going to take in an API, which is an initialized class from unified. It's going to be each one, uh, the entity, the knowledge graph, JSON, and the summary APIs are going to be different. And it's going to take in the text. Here's the system message. You are an expert in natural language processing and knowledge extraction. Given the text, identify main entities, and it's going to return the entities, and then it's going to return the relations uh, in between uh, this XML text as output, so we can parse it out uh, easily. Since we are using both Gemini and Claude, I didn't want to use JSON mode, but GPT-4, this would have been much easier if we did that. So it's just additional instructions to ensure. So this is the part that is important. I did say that sometimes it was getting lazy. I said, well, return this format regardless of how large the document is. And it didn't really work well with Claude. Maybe you can overcome this. So I said, if the document is long and overwhelming, then still do your best in returning as many entities as you can without making a mistake. This then causes Claude to return a few entities for really large documents. That's something to note. So this is the system message we have defined. We are uh, setting it using the set system message async method, uh, which is from the unified API class. And we just call the chat async method. Here is the text which you'll be analyzing. Extract entities and relations from this text, text in exactly the format presented. So another thing I learned is that initially this extract entities and relations from this text was right up here. And then the text was there. But it wasn't following that instruction very well, especially if the text was too long. So remember that uh, so in your may message that you're sending, not in the system message, perhaps in the system message as well. If you're inputting dynamic variables to put the instruction at the very end so you don't run into needle and haystack problems, this actually solved that problem for me. This just returns the response then. Get summary is the same. We are asking it to return a summary approximately 10 15% of the length of the original text, unless the text is very short or long. We are asking it to return both sentences and bullet points. We set the system message for this particular API because we're passing it here to this function. And I would call in the chat async to provide a summary of the following text. I suppose I should move this to the end as well. For example, like this, please. Maybe we can repeat the instruction, like such as please summarize, summarize in bullet points and sentences. So remember that because if this text is too long, this instruction may get forgotten. 
Next one is you get JSON entities. Again, it takes an API and text. The system message for this is you are an expert entity extraction. We are asking for a name, a type, and a description. We also provide the sample JSON schema in between output XML tags. And we do specify several times that always return JSON format in between these outputs. And again, here, if we do also enter that if the document is long and overwhelming, then still do your best, but Claude sometimes still actually doesn't follow this. Uh, and perhaps maybe the issue is here because I do have to, again, put it at the bottom, perhaps. This may have actually fixed that issue. Just remember that. Next up is how we're going to parse the XML output. I would like to take a moment to talk about the benefits of becoming a patron. And some of you may know, in the last year and a half, I've spent 3,000 hours, over 300 uh, projects as a patron. You will have access to all the code files, so you can get inspiration and iterate quickly. Another benefit is that you'll have access to all my courses. And my most recent and most proud one, the 1000X Masterclass, teaching how I, what I've learned on how to code fast and efficiently. Also the Streamlit course and the Fast API course. In my Patreon, I also have tiers in which you can connect with me one-on-one. -on -one. Check those out as well. To parse the XML outputs, we are actually using the XML so ET elementary library, which actually comes with Python. And we find uh, XML start and end and then parse the XML content pretty much by calling from string, extract entities and relations, and create a relations list, and then uh, return entities and relations, except if there's errors uh, or value error or parsing error, we print them. Next up is to create the graph. We initialize the nx.graph from uh, network x, and we just add the node for each entity, and we add an edge for, edge for each relation. Visualize graph. Again, here we are using the network. Find the edges. I save the graph as an HTML, which looks like this. And when you download it from the Streamlit app, it'll look like this as well. And then we open it and we read it because we're going to display this within our HTML, the Streamlit as HTML. So here is the function to read PDF files. We're just using PyPDF and read it page by page. Append it to a main text variable and then return it. Function to create a download link. We are converting everything into base64, and it's going to be an anchor tag for HTML, uh, a link, sorry, uh, and we're going to return that. This is the main asynchronous function to run it. We set the page config to wide. Uh, I think that just looks better because we are doing, we are using columns. Otherwise, if it wasn't wide, then it just doesn't look as nice. You can change that though here. And we say knowledge graph from documents is a title. Welcome to the knowledge graph visualizer. This is just regular text. Of, I think I because I was using color, that's why it's uh, having this little weird characters here. But it's a little problem, I suppose. Here we check for anthropic API keys. Okay, and we have a model selection box that is a drop down, as you as we saw here. That is what this does, this line, uh, select box. But if you don't have API keys, then we create a text input for your, the API keys of type pass, password for OpenAI. And we do say Google API key here, but it's actually for open router. And if there is no API key provided, we say it's a warning box is going to appear. Please enter an API key to proceed. And here we assign the API keys to their respective providers. And then here we initialize the Knowledge Graph API, Summary API, and the JSON API. We give them names. This is from the Unified API class again. To make things simple, we are passing in an API key. We are passing in a provider. You can also pass in a model parameter. We are setting use async to true. And we are setting the mix history worth 100,000 words for each for long documents, but be mindful that this actually ends up costing, you know, for example, with the NVIDIA, thank you, plot was costing something like 50 to 70 cents for, for all of all of these combined, because we are making three different calls with it to get a, you know, with the same amount of tokens. So just be mindful of that. If it, you can set this lower, so, you know, just experiment. And here we, this is the radio button to whether we want to paste text or upload the file. 
if it is so, then we create a text area for pasting text. Otherwise, this is to load the file, either whether it's text or PDF. If it's PDF, if, and if the PDF is long, it takes a while, so we show a play a spinner. And then we display a button, generate knowledge graph once the text is loaded. When this is clicked, if there is text that is provided, then we create two columns. With column one, we print extract and JSON entities, and we call the get entities and relations, make an API call, get those entities and relations. And then if there is entities and relations, display them, uh, print them, uh, print the relations, and then generate and display the knowledge graph by using the create graph and then the graph uh, visualize graph. And then we say component the components.html, which is from uh, Streamlit, is going to display this graph HTML at a certain height you specify. And here is where we display the download link for the graph. Uh, otherwise, if there is an error, then we display the warning. In the second column, we generate the summary. Pretty much we write the summary and we present a download link for it. And right underneath it, we get the JSON entities and again parse them and then provide display them. And then we're using the st.json here. So it displays in a nice JSON format. And then we display a download link, otherwise, error. error and it's the main error if there was no text to upload. And this is how we run it. So to, I should have said to run this. Maybe I should have said this in the beginning, but you probably know you have to say streamlit run and the name of the file. Okay, this will automatically start it and it should automatically pop up in your browser, right? Oh, but it also gives you a local URL that you can use, or you can also serve it to others as well. I mean, it does that. These um, classes get initialized twice. That is just a quirk with uh, streamlit. It works well. I hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, the code files will be available at my Patreon. I also have one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one meetings there for higher tiers. You may, if you want to take a look at that, I do provide consulting. Or if you need any help with your projects, or if you just want to talk to me, I have some higher tiers at my Patreon for that. Uh, also, I have weekly Ask Me Anything meetings with my Architect Plus patrons. Last one was this Sunday at 9 p.m. I do change the time. Next one's going to be coming up on the uh, at 12 p.m. noon LA time. So this is for architect patrons only. Uh, my patrons really enjoy this. So if you do become a Patreon architect level member, then you can enjoy those as well. Like I said, I have two, over 250 projects there. Check them out. And I am also more active at Twitter. Or I should have said X. My handle is hive underscore echo. If you want to follow me, I do post some small videos there as well. Or watching, and I'll see you in the next video.